Nothing is 
Amen. Especially as men, amen, the men of God, to take full ownership of your narrative. Amen. Let's take full ownership of the story that we are writing. Amen. Do not let your failures write another chapter in your life. Do not let disappointment write another chapter in your life. Take full ownership of your narrative. Amen. From this day forward, praise God, do not let anything demonic or negative or inferior to the goal that God has set for your life pen letters and pen words on the pages of your life. Take full control of the narrative. And you can do that by faith. How, Apostle Cunningham, how can I take control or get the authority back so I can rewrite my narrative, start where I am 
and write chapters of my life of favor and blessings and honor. Amen. The best way you can do this, men, amen, is to go to the word of the Lord and allow God's word. Give God's word the permission to have preeminence over your life. Amen. That means my life begins with the word and it ends with the word. This means, praise the Lord, that I will not allow any other decision, amen, or any other influence to be the final decision on my life. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the author, glory to God, and he is the finisher of my faith. So Jesus authorizes the narrative. He writes the narrative for my life. And the final chapter He's going to put the end or the period on my life. From this day forward, man, we will not allow our disappointments, our failures, the drama that's going on in our life, the feelings of depression. Amen. We will not let anything write on the pages of our life. Glory to God. We're going to take full ownership and full authority concerning the narrative of my life. How? We are all going to allow God's word to have preeminence. Let this word of God rule and dominate your thoughts. <laughs> Glory to God. The scripture says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The scripture also says that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. Praise the Lord. So we are going to allow the word of God to have the preeminence over our life. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then the scripture says, by him were all things created. Glory to God. So we don't care. Amen. I need all of the men to listen up. We really don't care what, what the devil is saying right now. We have the power to take the pen out of his hand and start writing and rewriting our own narrative. Amen. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to say and speak the word only over our life from this day forward. And if you believe that, begin to praise God for a new story, a new chapter, praise God, being written in your life. If you're not dead, you're not done. And God is going to get the victory out of what the devil started. God is going to finish that chapter. I believe it for all the men. I believe it for all of the fathers that this is the season where we take authority over our own narrative. Amen. The word of God is the only thing that is allowed to give me my identity. I will not let my failures identify me. I will not let my failed relationships identify me. I would not let that bad business deal, my bankruptcy, my financial status, my marital status, my marital condition, my divorce, my separation, my incarceration does not have the permission to define my life. Only what God's word says has the authority over my identity. God told me that this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I shall meditate therein day and night. That, thou, that I may observe to do all that is written therein. Praise God. And then I'm going to make my way prosperous. And then I am going to have good success if I meditate in the word of the Lord. So the word is going to shape my identity. The word is going to define who I am as an individual, as a purpose as a person, and as a man. The word gives me my identity. Amen. For example, if the word says I am blessed in the city and I am blessed in the field, that's the only thing that I'm going to accept. It's going to give me my purpose, my identity as an individual. He said I am healed, I am whole, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings, and I am sitting down in heavenly places. Glory to God. So I will not let my unemployment or my employment situation define me. Praise God. I am the head 
and I am not the tail. Glory to God. I am above only, and I am not beneath. Come on, men of God. Rise up and let God rebirth that identity in you. You are a king, and you are a priest in this earth realm. And if you believe it, start praising God right now for a new identity. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. The word of God says this. Amen. This is the only thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to allow the word of God to give me my direction. I'm going to allow God's word to order my steps. Your next move depends on the word of the Lord. Amen. Your next move. Do not make a decision. Do not decide what to do until that word, my God, magnifies in your soul and give you concrete Direction, praise God. Put that in the box, type that in the box. Direction, your direction is coming from the word of the Lord. We will not allow our emotions to direct us. We will not allow our incompetence or our discouragement to direct us. When David got to the place where his family was gone, the enemy came in and robbed a man and took his family from him. David began to cry. He began to weep. My God, and the, and the story says that he weeped till he had no more strength. Amen. But David did not let the weeping direct his steps. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And when he got in prayer, God gave him a direction. God gave him direction. Praise God. And God is going to start giving us direction to get out of what we are in. This is the season of maturity. And this is the season for your release. Do not let anything else direct your steps. Order my steps in the word. And we thank God for direction. So we're going to allow the word of God to give us our identity. And we're going to allow the word of God to give us our direction. And the last thing, men of God, fathers, the unsung heroes, praise God. We are all going to allow God's word to give us our destiny. The Bible says it like this, that we were predestinated before the foundation of the world. We were predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son. I want you to say my destiny is rooted in the word of God. I will not allow my GED or my educational status to give me my destiny. Praise God. My God, he says what? If you believe all things Things are what, y'all, possible if you believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. There is no failure in the kingdom. There is no failure in the spiritual realm. God is telling me to tell you right now, even though it did not come out the way you expected it, that doesn't mean your destiny is aborted. I need you to tell somebody or type somebody's name in that box real fast and let them know you still got a future. You still have a destiny. My God, mistakes falling and slipping and sliding does not abort what God has planted in your spirit. Rise up. Come on here. Arise and shine. Why? Because your light is come. And God is saying, let my word be your ruler. Let my word be, be your ruler. Let my word have preeminence. Oh, and we thank God for it right now. Come on, let's praise God for the word. We're going to give space for the word of God. Come on, praise God for the word. We're going to give space to the word of God. We are not what the Bible says. Trust in the Lord. With what? All of your what, y'all? Heart. And lean not to your own understanding. I will liken you unto a wise man that dug deep and built his house on the foundations of what Jesus Christ said. I'm coming to encourage every man out there and every father out there. My God, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. My God, don't you dare stop. Don't you dare quit. My God, why? Because the race is not given to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, but God is going to deliver. God is going to do something mightily for you and your family. If you believe it, begin to praise God right now for the victory in the name of of Jesus. Come on, give him glory right now. Come on, give him glory right now. Come on, give him glory right now. Come on, praise him right now. Why? Because you still have a destiny. Amen. So we're not going to allow the word of God to slip out of our mouth. This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. 
but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous. I need you to type in the box. I am prosperous. My God, why? Because I'm getting back to God's word. I'm getting back to what the Lord said. I'm getting back not to what my relatives said, not to what my friend said, not to what my boss said, not to what my employer said. Come on here, not to what my record said. Come on here. I'm getting back. Whose report are you going to believe, man? My God, we're going to believe the report of the Lord. We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Come on, give God praise right now. We're going to believe the report of the Lord. Come on. Give him glory right now. Glory to God. Give him praise right now. Glory to God. Hey, glory. Oh, I feel men rising up. I feel a man saying, look, I might have made the mistake, but that don't mean I'm miserable. Come on here. I might have messed up, but that don't mean that it's over now. I come to tell you right now that your destiny is rooted and grounded in what God is saying. Not your FICA score, not your unemployment, but what did God say? concerning you. Hey man, I come to tell you right now that God got plans for your life. God got plans for your life. And God is going to release you from every spirit that's binding you not to think like him. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Come on church out there and let's celebrate me. And come on one more time. Give him praise. Come on, give him glory right now. Give him glory right now. Come on in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Oh, my Shandada. All right. Only accept and receive what he has already written about you. All right. Only accept and only receive what God has already written about you. There is no need for you to get somebody's advice all the time. Listen to me carefully. You don't have to get counseling all, all of the time. You can open up the word of the Lord and the Bible says that when he comes, the spirit of truth, he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you into all of the truth. And then the scripture also tells me, beloved, that you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to do what? It's going to make you free. Make means that your situation can be full of hell, but your praise can be full of heaven. Amen. Make means that you don't have to come out of the fiery furnace. He will get in with you and deliver you from the fiery furnace. All fathers, get ready for God to release you. Get ready for God to renew you. Get ready for God to restore you in the name of Jesus. Why? Because his word has power. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe my God it don't care it doesn't matter your int intellect or your educational status if you believe the word God can turn the situation around now, if you believe that praise God right where you are come on give God praise right now come on glorify him in the name of Jesus only accept and receive what he has already written about you it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord, his God, it is written, my God, that I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not believe. It is written, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of not evil, but of good. My God, and to do what, y'all? To give you an expected end. God is not a man that he should lie. You got to get a word. You got to say that word. You got to put it in your mouth. You can open up any scripture because any scripture got power. My God, and you got to quote that word. You got to, my God, sober up and say, look, God, I want a word for myself. Daily bread, my God, I need daily bread. I need you to talk to me about what's in the book. What have you written of me? What did you write down about me? My God, you are a mystery in the spirit realm, brother. You are a mystery to all principalities. You are so amazing that the angels had to ask God, what is man that thou art so mindful of him? Why are you always coming to bail him out? Why are you always, my God, listening to his prayers and attending to his knees? My God. And God said, because he is the apex of my creation. That's my son. I, I can't leave him where he is right now. I know he done left me, but guess what? I, like that prodigal son, he's coming on back. My God is sending sons back. And the Bible says he's going to return the hearts of the father to the son. And the hearts of the son to the father. God said, I'm bringing you back 
to your children. Come on, give them glory right there. Amen. Ain't no court system going to keep a real father from his son. I bind that distraction in that legal realm. I bind that enemy right now. We're asking God to release sons to go back to their father. And if you believe it, begin to praise God right where you are. Come on, give them glory. Come on, open your mouth and give them glory. My God. I need you to type a man's name in that box. Type your uncle's name in that box. Come on here. Type your nephew's name in that box. Why? Because we got to go before the throne of grace and we got to pray. God, release him. Give my nephew that release. Yes, give my nephew that release. Oh, give him that release, God. Can't nobody open the prison door but you. God about to release. Come on, somebody. Only accept Amen, what God is saying. Only accept. Right, come on, type that name in the box. Amen. I want to see names in that box. First and last name, and we're going to take that name to the glory, to the throne of glory. Six things, six results happen because of your intercessory prayer. That's why we got to pray. Huh? This is why we got to pray. Our weapon is prayer. Come on here. Our weapon is prayer, and then after we pray, we get up and praise. Paul and Silas was in jail. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all got to believe the Bible. We got to believe that these things were written for our admonition. They wasn't written like a fairy tale. When you get into a problem. Oh! Yes! When you get into a problem, God said, I want to see your response. Some of y'all right now like Peter in jail. But what is your response to this? Paul and Silas said, you know what we're going to do? The first thing we're going to do after we get beat, the first thing we're going to do after we get falsely accused, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down and pray about this situation. Hey. Oh, my, no, no, no. Y'all got to come on here now. God said, I want you to pray about your And then after you give me praise in your prayer, I want you to stand up. I want you to start praising me. For the prayer to be answered. And when Paul and Silas begin to praise God. The Bible say that the foundation of the jail begin to shake. Oh, God say, glory to God. I'm going down to the root. To the foundation of your problem. And I'm going to shake that devil loose out of you. Glory to God. And all of the prison doors flew open. Come on here. But Paul said, jailer, don't you harm yourself. Why? Because we're still here. There is power in your prayer. Come on, somebody. I need the daughters of Zion right now to praise God for the men. Come on, daughters. Come on, daughters. Take about 30 seconds. Come on. Give God praise for the men in your life. Come on here. I don't hear you. I don't feel you. Open your mouth and give them glory. Come on. Call their name out right now. Come on. God, we ask you to bless them right now. Bless Carrie Williams. Bless Larry Washington. Bless Timothy Williams. Bless Apostle Jones. Bless Pastor Burns. Bless Randolph right now. Bless Mr. Harris. God! Call their name out. Amen. Don't let Facebook stop you from calling. So what? Amen. We're dealing with Facebook. Deal with it. Come on here. Your prayer can go past your living room. Glory to God. Your prayer can go past your basement. Amen. Don't be ashamed of the afflictions of the servant of the Lord. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but we coming out this affliction. Amen. I need you to say to yourself, I'm coming out this affliction. Glory to God. Glory. Amen. Come on here. We thank God for, amen, pastor, amen, for pastor pagan. Come on. Praise him right now. God go bless right now. Pastor Williams, God go bless right now. Pastor Burns, God go bless right now. Pastor Johnson, Apostle Sean, God go bless. Hey, now if you believe it, give him praise right there. Come on here. Oh, say yes. Come on, y'all. Oh, I don't care. Put the name in the box when it comes to your head. Why? Because God is about to release men. There are six results. Six results from this prayer. In Acts 12, praise God, 6 through 8. It says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, 
and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. Praise the Lord. He saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Daughters of Zion, come on, where you at? <laughs> Type in that box, I'm a DOZ. Glory. Huh? Because Peter was in jail, but notice Peter wasn't praying. Why? Peter had peace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you know you did what you're supposed to do, you're not worried about tomorrow. Come on, I'm not worried about tomorrow. I know what God told me to do. Somebody say amen. Come on here. We're not fretting about what he say. Fret not thyself because of what? Evil doers. And don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. My God shall supply all of your need. Come on here. There's no need for you to worry about tomorrow. Peter was asleep. Come on here. Why? Because he did what God told him to do. <laughs> but the church began to pray for Peter. I need you to type in the box, I am a D-O-Z. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, y'all. I'm a D-O-Z. That's right. And D-O-Z's daughter of Zion's, they have a relationship with God that their prayer can move the hand of God. Woo! Ain't that... Amen. Hallelujah. I know you might know a banker. I know you might know a financial advisor. Some of y'all know presidents of companies and CEOs of company. But I'm glad I know an anointed DOZ. Because when the finances run out, I got a DOZ. They can get down on a knee. And move the hand of God. Type in the box, I am a D-O-Z. Glory to God. Oh my God, I feel like dancing. Come on here, y'all. Oh. Glory to God. I'm a D-O-Z. That's what we need right now. We need the daughters of Zion to pray that the men get released. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Y'all, hey, I feel like having a little church. I feel like praising God. But I am a D-O-Z. And in the Bible, you got to read it when you get a chance. I can't go over it right now. Amen. But you got to go to the book of Isaiah, the 37th chapter. <laughs> My God, Sennacherib, was throwing out threatenings against the children of Israel. But there was a daughter of Zion that was committed to prayer. Am I preaching today? My God. And those daughters of Zion, they heard what the devil was trying to do. They heard that the enemy was mad and the enemy was threatening the mobility of the kingdom of God. But we're not afraid of what the devil is trying to do because God gave us weapons where we can bind that devil and we can loose the power of God. And that DOZ got stirred up in prayer to the point where she left her body. She died to the flesh so we can get into the spiritual realm. And she climbed that holy ladder and got all the way in the spirit and started directing traffic. And she came to the spirit of Sennacherib and she shook her head at that devil saying, no, 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 no. You will not do what you plan. Then the Lord took up the prayer and he said, I'm going to send a blast on that devil. I come to tell you, God, about to blast you out. All the men, get ready for your release. Get ready to come out. Get ready for your deliverance. And I need the DOZ to start praising God right now. Because your prayer has been answered. Come on, give God glory right now. Hey. Yes. Come on. My God. Hey. He's stirring up right now. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. So the first thing happens after you pray is that a light will shine in the prison. There is no restriction with God. God will come in your prison. 
Oh, Jesus. God will give you revelation before you get out of your situation. That's how good God is. Amen. God, God ain't got to break you out and you come out ignorant. Come on. Uh -huh. When you come out, praise God, you coming out with wisdom. You coming out with information. You coming out with revelation. Why? Because affliction make your spirit keen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But before that, he said, it was good that I was afflicted. Now I understand your precepts. So Peter was asleep, but the light came inside of the prison. That's the first result of prayer. Revelation come before you get delivered. Amen. Then the second thing is, Peter woke up. So men of God, God is shining light right now. Wherever you are, God has released light to come in your situation. I know your divorce is making it look dark, but there is a DOZ somewhere that done called out your name. Huh? And light has come into your prison, and now you are awoke. My God, I need y'all to type in that box in all capital letters, wake up. <laughs> Why? Because your light is here. God is waking me and up right now. Come on, wake up. You're not a failure. Wake up. You're not a loser. Wake up. You're not a waster. Wake up. You're not cursed. Wake up. You're not going to go down like that. God said, wake up. Why? Because it's time for you to come out that prison. Now, if you believe it, give God praise right now. Give God glory right now. Huh. Come on, type that name in the box and tell them, wake up, 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 wake, 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 wake up. Yes, wake up. Whoa. My God. Huh? So he woke up Peter. That light shined and woke him up. Next thing is going to happen to you, men of God. God is going to raise you up. Huh? The third thing is, God is raising up me. Nah, even in your prison, God will make the dignity come back. Even in the courtroom where the judge saying that you are dead, be daddy. Amen. Something on the inside said, no, I'm not. I had a few bumps in the road. But guess what? God has made me a better father. And right now you're taking me to court. You're dragging my name through the courts, making me feel like I'm a bad father. But God said, the light gonna come and you're gonna wake up within and then you're gonna rise up in all of your dignity and say, I made some mistakes, but I'm coming back to the Father. I need all of the DOZs to start praising God right now. Cause I see husbands coming back. I see fathers coming back. I see sons coming back. I see nephews coming back. I see gangbangers coming. I see drug lords coming. God dealing with you to put the drugs down, to put the liquor down, to put the guns down and let God God revive you. I need you to say rise up. Whoa. Glory to God. So the light comes in prison. God ain't waiting to, amen, for you to get out. He'll show you right now what's going on. Amen. Then Peter woke up. God said, you go wake up. Then the next thing is, he go, the, the angel raised him up. And as the angel raised him up, see, we just don't need people to lift you up out of your situation. You just don't need another loan for your car. Amen. You just don't need somebody to help you out temporarily. But while the angel was lifting him up, the angel spoke something into him. Hey. <laughs> yes! The angel what, y'all? Spoke something. Type in that box. Speak something. Decree a thing. My God. God gonna hook you up with people that's not only gonna help you out temporarily, but while they're helping you, they gonna do what the angel did. The angel spoke to him saying, get up quickly. Mm. <laughs> oh, 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 come on y'all. He go inspire you saying, my God, I'm gonna give you this $500 so you can pay your bills and do, but I want you to do one thing. I want you to rise up all the way out of it. So words of inspiration is the result of prayer. You gonna find the gift of exhortation after you pray. It's something about being in the presence of God. You can come in one way, but if you really, really prayed, you're not going to get up the same man. 
The Bible say that Saul ran into the right company and Saul, God gave Saul another heart and he became another man. That's what's going to happen to you. God go what? Raise you up and he's going to inspire you saying, whatever I told you to do, do it quickly. Start your business now. Come on here. Start your business right now. Somebody shout right now. Start your business now. Call your son now. Call your daughter now. My God, I know y'all don't want to hear this. Call your ex-wife and say, baby, I'm sorry. Come on here. Get on that phone and call her right now. Why? Because God got to have clearance. Can't no plane take off if the runway not clear. Come on, men. Say yes. Come on, y'all. Open your mouth and tell them yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Tell them yes, Lord. God said, I'm going to make your pathway straight. Amen. All you got to do is say, look, I'm sorry. I wasn't the man that I am now. But God has given me clearance. Now I'm about to take off and I'm about to fly at the altitude. Do you know God about to raise you up and cause you to fly, my brother? If y'all believe that, give me those emojis clapping in hand. Somebody shout right now. Somebody type in that box right now, right now. Come on, y'all. Type in that box, big letters, right now. God said, I want these brothers to get up right now. Amen. Then the next thing that really happened, I love this part right here. It says, Peter was bound with two chains. Not the hip-hop artist. He was bound with two chains. Hey, type that in the box, two chains. Come on here. He said he was bound with two chains. By God. But when he said, arise quickly, guess what happened? The chains fell off. <laughs> what did the Tasha Cobbs tell us? What did our sister say? I hear the chains fall. <laughs> say yes! I hear the chains falling. My God, get up quickly and the chains go fall. When you change your position, men, the devil can no longer restrict your movement. Huh? Get up. Come on, y'all. Get up. I need a DOZ that got anointed hands to type that in. Get up. Huh? Come on, y'all. My God. I need y'all to type. I feel that right now. If the daughter of Zion got power, type it in the box. Tell your brother, get up. And when you get up, the chains go fall. I know you don't have a job, but go downtown anyway. I know you don't have employment, but dress like you got it right now. Get up. Change your posture. I know you ain't got the money, but go down to the bank like you got it. Drive up. My God, go to the ATM, put your card in. You know ain't no money in there, but God say, do it by faith. And guess what? Your mind gonna start to change. Money not an issue when you have faith in God. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I need the daughters of Zion to say, get up. Come on, give them glory right there. Come on, give them praise right there. Come on, give him praise. Come on. Oh, my shine. All right, so we got the light shining in the prison. I'm watching my time. We got Peter waking up. We got the angel raising him up. We got the angel speaking to him. Get up quickly. Then we got the chains falling off. Then the Bible says in verse 8, the angel told Peter what to do next. Guard yourself. Bind on your sandals. In other words, put your shoes on. <laughs> hey, traveling shoe, Lord, got on my traveling shoes. He said, put your shoes on. Huh? Put your coat on. Why? And follow me. In other words, Peter, after you do all those five things, prepare yourself to get out of jail. I need y'all to say, God! Prepare us for deliverance. Ran right back in your seat on this great Father's Day and say, God, get me out of this prison. God, get me out of this cell. I'm ready to go right now. I got my shoes on. I got my coat on. I got my belt on. I'm ready to get out. And the angel said, follow me. That's the six things that prayer would do. Honey, I'm looking for men to knock on your door. 
Hallelujah. I'm looking for men to beat down the doors of the church. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Woo! The prodigal son was in a pig's pit. Roaming with the pigs. Now, you know Jews don't eat. The nation of Israel do not eat pork. Come on here. So the Bible was saying in the story that he had gotten so low that he got out of his culture. My God. My God. And when he got that low, that's when he woke up. Sometimes you got to get real low to wake up. Brothers, that's where you are right now. But God says, I'm not going to let your culture switch. That's when he woke up and said, how many servants? My father got a whole bunch of people working for him. How many servants? How many hired hands does my father have? <laughs> my Lord, today. How many servants does my father have? In other words, why am I down here with the pigs? The scripture said he came to himself. <laughs> Y'all daughters and I need to shout in your living room right now. You need to take a lap around your coffee table right now. Glory! You need to take a lap around right now. Why? Because your prayers have been answered. Your husband is coming back to himself. How? Glory! How? Say yes! All right. Your husband coming back. Your husband coming back to it. His mind when he came to himself. So he right here. Glory to God. Amen. The real him is right here. He had to come to himself. Huh? My Lord. So he right here. He the word. Come on here. Amen. And he had to come to himself. God said I'm about to close the gap between the fictitious you and the real you. Hey. I'm about to close the gap from the, the self that your mistakes made to the real man that I call. Oh, oh, come to yourself. You are king. You're royal. You're the owner. You're the head. You're healed. Come on, man. Glory to oh. I feel brothers coming on out. My God, I'm not this. Uh, my mistakes have made this. But this is not me. I'm going to come to myself. And when he came to himself, he said, I'm about to go back home to my father. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> I'm about to come back home to myself. My God, my God. And the Bible say that the father saw the son afar. Look, you ain't gonna have to make that all that distance. God got to close the gap. Not gonna take you six months to get it back. Not gonna take you three months to get it back. You can have it back right now. Come on, praise him right now. Daughters of Zion, I need your strength right now. Every daughter type in that box right now, right now, right now. Oh, if your hands anointed, daughters of Zion. Daughters of Zion, now you still anointed out there. Type in that box right now. God said, you're going to get it back right now. Huh? Prepare yourself. Say to yourself, Kevin, put your name in there. Kevin, prepare yourself for deliverance. Hey, Jesus. Uh, somebody shout the release. Huh? Release. So Acts 12 and 10 through 11 says it like this. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. <laughs> Let me read that again. And when they were past the first and the second war, you about to bust through the enemy's first line of defense. Y'all not here today. Glory to God. Apostle Cunningham, what are you saying? That no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you're going to prove that that tongue lied. Huh? 
The justice system lied. The penal institution lied. Family court lied. Come on here. My God, police lied on you. Detectives lied on you. God go reverse the case. My God, y'all are praising God yet, men? My God, come on here. Y'all got to praise God. Why? Because a supernatural power has been released because of the daughter of Zion. My God, daughter of Zion, y'all praying. Now, my God, God said, I have accepted your prayers. Uh, glory to God. Come on, y'all. Type somebody's name in that box. Think of another brother. Think of a pastor. Real quick. Think of a pastor. Put a pastor name in that box. Tell that pastor, prepare yourself for deliverance. Say yes! Prepare yourself. All right. Look, man, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Facebook got to get used to us. <laughs> Come on here. We praising God over in this living room. Y'all say amen. Huh? And when they were passed, you're going to get past the first line of defense. You're going to get past the second line of defense. No weapon formed against you go keep you in prison. Huh? Your genealogy not going to keep you in prison. Your DNA not going to keep you in prison. What your father did or your mother did not do has no bearing on the future that God has already birthed in you. Huh. I need y'all to share this with somebody. Share this with somebody that's at rock bottom. And tell them, you're going to get through this. You are going to make it out of this situation. My God. He says we're going to get past the first ward. They got past the second ward. Now look. They came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. See, God trying to get Peter in his place. Huh? And sometimes you need supernatural intervention to get you in your place. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. Excuse me if I'm screaming. I'm just, I just mean it. Come on here. How? Oh! I mean that you're not made to be in that prison. You are not constructed to deal with that affliction. You're not scoped it to deal with that situation. But the potter is making you another vessel because of the situation. Uh, I'm preaching to myself. My God, believe what I say that in the next 30 days, you are never going to be the same man. <laughs> Woo! Now the daughters of Zion, you can eat the crumbs. That fall from the mind. My God, there's going to be a revolution in your mind. There's going to be a transformation in your mind. Your money go match your mind. Huh? My God, sow that seed and watch what God do for you. Praise the Lord. Now, the angel led him to the iron gate. Now, that's the part where you know you can't move that gate. Huh? Bishop Tudor Bismarck said that there are four type of doors. There's a door you got to use your strength to open. You got to push on the door. You got to turn the knob. You got to make it work. Come on here. You got to open your own door sometime. You got to hit the pavement. You got to walk. You got to send your resumes in over and over and over and over again. You got to write. You got to clean. You got to mop. You got you to open that door through your own movement, your own work. Hallelujah. Then there's another door that's based off your, uh, your senses, your timing rather. That means the time the gate opens up or the door opens up like a train, you got about five seconds to jump on, boom, or that door go close. My God. Then you got a door, all you got to do is get close to it. <laughs> and your heat, your anointing, you ain't even got to push, pull, you ain't got to do nothing. All you got to do is get close to it. 
I feel like shouting. Y'all not shouting now. Because God say what? You close to that door. <laughs> say yes. Hey Amen. I want you to type in, your, in that box. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. The angel led him to the door. The gate, the hard place. My God, this divorce is hard. It's like an iron gate. <laughs> My children like an iron gate. My money like an iron gate. Come on, y'all. My God. My mind. It ain't even that. My mind can be the iron gate. You can trap yourself with your own thoughts. When Jesus stepped off the boat on the island of Gadara, <laughs> he had another level of power because he came through the storm. And when he stepped off the boat, there was a maniac controlling that city. Come on, y'all, say amen. And his mind was totally possessed by the demon called Legion. Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, because there are a lot of us in here. We did a research, and that means over 6,100 devils was in one man, which means that enemy could take a cubic centimeter and a cubic millimeter of space up in your body. Come on, somebody. Your mind not even there. Your mind is against what God has destined for you. But don't get sad. Why? Because Jesus coming through that storm. He's riding. Like our sister Yolanda at while riding, he rode in the windstorm to get to your mind. Oh, glory to God. God said, I'm not going to let that devil take your mind. I'll come through a typhoon. I'll come through a hurricane. I'll come through a storm to bless your mind. Put your hand on your mind and say, Jesus, deliver me right now. Now give God praise right there. Come on, y'all. My God. Huh? I need y'all to say he coming, he coming. Now, the angel led him to the gate. Huh? <laughs> I feel the power of God. The angel led him to the gate, and the gate was iron, which means impossible. But notice, the next part of the scripture said, which opened up to them, which opened to them, of his own accord. That means the gate became a person. Look at that. There's a spirit behind your imprisonment. <laughs> Say yes! There's a spirit behind your incarceration. There is literally a demon trying to stop you from getting into your place. But the devil is a liar. I need somebody to type in that box. I'm getting in my place. <laughs> Come on, type it, type it. Say, I'm getting in my place. I'm getting in my place. I'm getting in the spirit. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to take dominion. But I'm getting in my place. Sickness, not my place. Poverty, not my place. Being here, not my place. Sadness, not my place. Yeah, go Shanda. Wow! Uh, let me read it again. Which opened to them of his own accord. The gate responded to the power. <laughs> Do you see this supernatural strength, God? The gate, which can't speak, it can't talk, it can't think, it can't think, <laughs> but it responded to the Spirit of God. The tumor can't speak. The tumor, my God. But it can hear and it can feel the presence of God. Right now, daughter of Zion, bind that tumor. Come on. Say yes. Come on now, tumor right. Dissolve. 
dissolve right now. You know what? My God. <laughs> huh? The, de the devil trying to keep you in. But the angel got close to an iron gate and the gate responded to the spirit. Jesus said, you can speak to this mountain. Then he said, you can speak to this fear tree. Then he said, you can speak to the sycamine tree. And if you have faith and doubt not, it will and it should obey you. Job said, we go what? Decree a thing. And it shall be established. Open your mouth and decree right now. I'm healed. I'm blessed. I'm sanctified. Come on. I'm saved. I'm covered by the blood. I'm wealthy. I'm prosperous. I got my mind back. Speak, speak. Right. Don't be bashful. Don't be full of pride. Let that devil know what God has done for you. Open your mouth and tell him yes, Lord. Come on. Huh? Then he says this, and what? They went out and they passed on through one street and forth with the angel left them. Now, that right there means that the angel ain't supposed to stay with you all the time. It's just supposed to get you out of what the devil put you in. Now, as a man, you can take it from here. Whoa! I feel manhood coming back. Yeah! I feel dignity coming back. Huh? Daughters of Zion, type in that box. You can take it from here. Now, let's go back to three realms of deliverance. Then we're going to get you on out of here. We ain't going to go no further. Glory to God. Our time is leaving us. Hey! <laughs> Glory to God. There were three realms of deliverance. This was going to happen for all the fathers and the men. God going to deliver you in three realms. The first realm was the realm of the chains. I typed it in the box, chains. That is going to happen before you leave the prison. See, we are made in the image of God. That means we can do like God. Amen. The three Hebrew boys went in the fire bound hand and foot. Huh? Now, when they got in the fire, it was the fire that was meant to kill them that actually freed them. Because the flames burned the ropes. So what the devil put on you to kill you is actually freeing you. My God, y'all getting that? Glory to God, I feel like shouting for you. Look at somebody around in your house. Tap them, I don't care if they eat, I don't care if they watch TV. Say, tap them on show, say, look, I'm free. <laughs> put that in the box, say, I am free, I'm free, I'm free. What, it's not over, but I'm free. You still in the divorce proceedings, but I'm free. You gotta go down, amen, to the court every day, but I'm free. My, you're unemployed, but I'm free. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Why? Because the thing that came against me really freed me from it. My God. How? Oh, that's why you're unbeatable. Surrounded on every side by trouble, but you're not distressed. Trouble on every side. But what? I'm free. This got to happen before you get out the prison. Now, the first chain, see, he's delivering the men from two chains. Y'all put that in the box, two chains. He's delivering the men from these two chains. God gave me this. Because I'm a man, I feel men. I know the unspokenness of men. Huh. And if you're a man, you know the unspoken words of men. Come on here. And the first chain is incapability. The devil does not want you to feel like you are capable of doing what God is putting your heart to do. Huh? 
That's the first change. Not feeling capable of running your house or providing for your house or covering your children or protecting your wife. Not feeling capable of being a man, a good father, a good husband, a good leader. You're just not capable of bringing in more money. The devil has set up a narrative where after you read it, you will feel incapable. Glory to God. That's one chain that you can't do it. No matter what you do, it ain't good enough. Come on, brothers. I need the brother to type in amen. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, it ain't good enough. I don't get the results. My God, I'm working harder. Amen. I'm sweating more. But it's just not working. Then the devil say, yep, something must be wrong with you. He'll make you feel like you are incapable. But God gave me one scripture. <laughs> that's going to break the chain of feeling incapable. My God. And that scripture comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter, when he said, I can do all things. My God, today. Come on in. I need all the brothers to type it in the box, capital letters. I can do all things. Yes, I can do it. My God. I can make it through this storm. I can raise my children. I can raise my son to be a productive man. I might have messed up in the past, but I feel the capability of the anointing of God making me able to do it. I'm well able to take that mountain. I'm well able to run my house. I need y'all to say yes and put in the box, I can. My God, I can do it. Glory to God, I can do it. I can get over this bad marriage. I can get over that divorce. I can get over my incarceration. Yes, I got a record down here on earth, but I got a record higher than the record on earth. My record is in heaven. Y'all say I can, come on. Glory to God. All right, we got to let y'all go. Hey, look, man, I'm going to give it my all. Huh? Somebody type in the box, give it your all. I'm not going to play. If God told you to do something, give it your all. Be 100%. Go after it. Huh? If any man put his hand to the gospel plow and he look back, he ain't fit for the kingdom of God. Huh? Type in the box. You can do it. You can do it. I can. Then the next chain, come on here, is being ineffective. Ineffective means that you're not capable of producing results. Huh? So men got two chains on their wrist. One, incapable. And the other one is ineffective. The devil tell you this, men. You're not capable. And you're not effective. What good are you? She's better off with another husband. Look at all the trouble you done put her through. This is what the devil say. The devil will write your narrative. The devil will write your narrative, but the devil is a liar. How? Oh, the devil is a liar. Men, on one wrist, incapability. On another wrist, ineffective. The devil said you're not capable and you're not effective. God wasted his time. Huh? Look at these other men prospering. Look at you. What you going to do? You gonna tell that devil? Philippians 4 and 13. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ with strength. What about the other one? The works that I do, you're gonna also do. And greater works, I'm gonna bring some effect to it. What else you gonna tell the devil? You gonna tell the devil, the fervent, effectual. I'm an effective in prayer, my God. Righteous man gonna pray. And God don't avail it much. I need you to type in the box, I'm capable and effective. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the what? Power that worketh in you. Glory to God. But that devil got to get up off you. Why? Because you can do it. The devil is a liar. Come on here, I can do all things. The devil is a liar. Somebody say amen. 
That's the first ram of deliverance. The second ram of deliverance, he's going to get you actually out of that situation. The prison, amen, is not made for the king. Huh? Come on here, daughters of Zion, bag me up. Happy Father's Day. Come on, we got about 12 more minutes. Then we'll be out your way. Somebody say hey. Hallelujah! The prison is not made for this king. Why are you down there, oh king? Huh? Yeah, Jesus. Come on, the king ain't but don't belong down there. It's time for the king to get up out that prison. Hallelujah! Come on, daughter of Zion. Come on, command your king to get up out of that prison. Huh? I'm capable and I'm effective. And guess what? I'm getting out this prison. Now, I've researched the word prison. Now, watch this now. God about to get you out the prison. Huh? God about to get you what, 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 what? God about to get you out the prison. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm trying not to knock anything over. But God is about to get you out of the prison. Feeling like you trapped. Feeling like you can't say nothing. Feeling like your words don't mean nothing. You're battling the thoughts in your mind. You're worrying in your own mind. No, I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Guys, I'm about to get you out of that. There's no place, amen, fit for a king like that. That place not fit for you. You are a ruler. My God, you decree it, and the spiritual servants go execute it. <laughs> the Roman centurion said, my servant is at home grievously sick of the palsy, Matthew 8. Come and heal him. Jesus said, I will come. But that Roman centurion said, no, I'm not worthy for you to be up under my roof. Come on, somebody. Come on, y'all. And the Bible said that the servant, the Roman centurion said, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Can you say yes? My God today, my God today. Come on here. And the servant, the, the, the Roman centurion said, speak the word only, and my servant shall Shall, then he gave him the reason why. He said, because I am a man under authority. And therefore, I have authority. I say to the one, go, he go. I say to the other, come, he come. My, and he said, Jesus, you got that same authority. You say this and demons go. You say that and angels come. So all you got to do is speak that word. Can somebody say yes? Then Jesus said, I ain't found no faith like that. That's great faith. I ain't found that level of faith, not in the church, but the men of God. You got the same faith that the Roman centurion got. Speak that word. Speak to your situation because you got royalty down in your blood. You are the king. Now open your mouth and decree what you want. Come on, give God glory. My God. So the prison is not a place for the king. Can I get a witness? Now, the word prison, I looked it up. Amen. And then when you're interpreting dreams, if you ever have a dream that you're in a prison, don't fall out and roll on the floor and say, oh, God, I'm incarcerated, can't get out. Because one of those spiritual symbolisms of a prison according to dreams and vision, is a place where truth is developed. Huh? Paul wrote a lot of his epistles from prison. What was he doing? Developing truth. Huh? Most, uh, most of our brothers and sisters that go to the penal institution, praise God, they come out with master's degrees and bachelor's degrees and PhDs. Why? They have developed truth. Some of them even research their case and become their own lawyer. Why? They are developing truth. Huh? And this is why the prison got to cough you up. Why? Because you used it against its purpose. 
while the devil wanted you to sit there in misery, praise God, you quarantined yourself and you did what? Develop some truth. Now the truth has a goal. And what's the goal of truth? Your freedom. Type in the box, capital letters, I'm free of all those lies. So if the truth make me free, it's the lie and the deception that binds me. Huh? But God say, I'm giving you a developed sense of truth. You're going to find out that you really are made in the image of God. Ooh-wee. And that means God got to come and rescue. That's why David said, you will not suffer my soul to see destruction. But you're going to come down in the grave. If I make my bed in the grave, if I make my bed in hell, you are still with me. I'm coming today to tell you that all of the men, you got an expiration date on your tears. There's an expiration date on all of your fears. Because God is coming to get you out of your prison. And if you believe it, shout, I'm free. Type in that box again, say, I am free. Ooh, Jesus. Come on, give him praise right there. We got to let you go. My God. Woo! So, he's delivering you from incapability and effectiveness. Ineffectiveness. And then he's delivering you from the prison. Huh? And the last one is, he's delivering all fathers and men from the expectation of people. Do you know that the worst kind of pressure is when people put pressure on you that you didn't even know you had to get up under? I didn't know that there was a term of them requirements. Now, I didn't know I had to do all that. Huh? And then you assume all of this responsibility because you want to be the man of the house. Huh? Men got to have broad shoulders. Y'all say amen. Huh? They got to be able to pick up the house spiritually, put it on their shoulders or put it on their back and carry the house from point A to point B. But then there is a demon, come on here, that puts ungodly pressure on you. It's called self-expectation. You ain't got to do nothing, praise God, that God didn't tell you to do. My God, today, y'all ain't saying that. God is freeing you. How? From the How? Oh, glory to God. I say God is freeing you from the false expectation. Well, you got to do this and you got to do that. Y'all ain't saying that. No. All they got to do is serve Jesus. Come on here. God about to meet this thing out. Balance is coming. You're not going to overwork yourself and overworry yourself. God about to give you a help meet that is able to help you. Y'all not happy today. Daughters of Zion, get ready. Why? Because men need help. You're not coming to take over, but you're coming to help him out. You're going to carry the load because that man is feeling under pressure. Why? From the ungodly expectation of all the people. But God said, my God, I'm delivering you right now. You ain't got to be a man pleaser. You ain't got to be a man server. All you got to do is please me. Study to show thyself approved. My God, a workman. Study that word so you can get pleasure out of God. And God can get pleasure out of you. And God will put on your shoulders only what you can bear. Come on, give him praise. Clap your hands and give God glory. He's delivering you from chains. He's delivering you from prison. And he's delivering you from the expectation. Do you know people want you to fail? Some people don't want you to be prosperous. Am I talking to y'all today? D.O.Z., you can eat from this bread right here. Come on here. How we're shared with you. Some people are not happy that you're happy. <laughs> Some people are looking for you to trip over your feet and fall on your face. Huh? But the Bible says that a righteous man or a just man falleth seven times. 
Hey! <laughs> but that's all right. God is there on fall number one. God is there on fall number two. God is there on three, four, and five. God is there on six and seven. Why? To catch you before you fall. Now unto him that is able to keep you from what? Falling. Type in the box, I'm not falling no more. I'm not falling for it no more. All right. Glory to God. Come on here. Now listen. The last point we're going to make, and we're going to get up out of here. Huh? Why is God delivering you? Men, this is the reason why you got to know why you're coming out the prison now. Why? He's delivering you for you to do something new. He don't want you to go back to that old man. Come on now. He's not going through all this and dismissing an angel. So when you get, get out, you go back to that old man. Lot got out. <laughs> his children got out. But his wife looked back. She turned back. Come on, she became a pillar of salt. God said, now, brother, when I get you out this time, don't look back. Start something new. You can't put old wine in what, y'all? New skins. I need y'all to type in bold letters, new. He's delivering these men so they can start something new. Can somebody say amen? Last point. You are entering into a season when things are just going to open up for you. Huh? This is the season of, great, of blessings. Come on, Holy Ghost, and favor. God is going to grace us with blessings and favor, which means unmerited favor. You don't deserve this next round God about to pull out. Uh -huh. Did you hear, do you hear that word of a, a promise and prophecy? You are entering into a season where things are just going to open up for you without your sweat. You're going into a sweatless area where your abundance is going to overpower your seed. <laughs> I don't care what size the seed is, say the Lord. Just plant it in good ground and watch your harvest. Come on here. Overwhelm all of your heartache. The only way you can't remember pain is God got to overpower it with favor. Unmerited favor. It's coming your way. New doors are opening up for you. As men, God is going to deliver you and set you free from the old. And for all of these words that just came out of my mouth by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the church is going to say amen. Come on, give God praise. Come on, lift those hands and give them glory. Come on, we praise you. Come on. We love you today. Come on. We praise you. Come on, give them glory. Hey, and for this, we give you praise. Come on here. We give you praise. Glory to God. We give you praise. Clap your hands and give God glory right now. He's a wonderful God, and we love you. Father, we thank you right now for all of the men. This is a wonderful Father's Day. You've blessed us to be a blessing to somebody else. You've graced us so we can show favor to somebody else. Father, we pray a special prayer for all men. Let them be encouraged. Let them be edified. Let them be empowered to be better leaders, God. Take off the chains of incapability and ineffectiveness. In the name of Jesus, shine the light in the prison, God. Lift them up and give them words of inspiration and encouragement and empowerment. And Father, we thank you for doing it right now. In Jesus' name. Now, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, the best relationship that you can ever have is a relationship with him. 
Amen. If you died right now and you don't know where you are going, this is the perfect time to get that situation together. All this is going on in the world. Let's not lose our focus on the main goal. I know a lot of people don't preach it anymore. I haven't heard a lot of pastors really preach it and teach it in its depth. But there is still a rapture that's going to happen. The Bible says that there's going to be a trumpet. When that trumpet sounds, there's going to be a shout of the Lord. Amen. That voice is going to shout. That trumpet is going to sound. And the scripture says, amen, that the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we which remain, we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord forevermore. Father, forgive us for our ignorance towards your scriptures. And forgive us for not having that perfect, pure desire to exalt you. You have called pastors and preachers to get people prepared for the judgment. Because it's appointed unto men once to die, then after that they will be judged for the words that were spoken, for the acts and the deeds, rendering every man according to the deeds of his body. This is very serious. We got coronavirus, the pandemic. We got the social uprising. We got the racial rioting. We got the looting. We got everything going on. Systemic overturn. Everything's going political, fervor, political heat, hurricanes, earthquakes. All of these things are going on at the same time. And it's a great demonic distraction to get us focused on something that is really meaningless. What does it profit a man? I know people don't like these scriptures, but what does it profit you if you get everything that you wanted to in this world, but you didn't take care of your soul? You didn't take care of your soul because the body is going to be motionless one day. It's going to die. It won't be able to move. It won't be able to jump. You won't be able to jump in your Maserati or your, your Fiat or your, your Volkswagen or your, your Mercedes Benz. You won't be able to jump in your Range Rover. You won't be able to go to the lake front. You won't be able to go here, go there. Because when you die, your, your life here on earth is done. But your life begins in another place, beloved. So where would you be? Father, put a fire in us as pastors and preachers to get the body Christ prepared for your coming. Now, if you know that you're not right with God, you know you got things that in your life that he is not pleased with, you know it. I need you to stop what you're doing and lift both of your hands and close your eyes and repeat after me these words. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your only begotten son I come to you on this day as a sinner I am not well I am not whole I need you to enter into my life give me peace give me grace through your mercy forgive me of all of my wrongs all of my sin, all of my iniquity, every act of ungodliness, purge me of it, cleanse me of it, free me from it. In Jesus' name, save me. I believe you died for me. I believe you went to hell to fight for me. I believe your blood cleanses me. And by my faith in you, I believe that you're coming back again for a clean, healthy church. I want to be a part of that church. In Jesus' name. Now, if you believe what you said, welcome to the family. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Let's clap our hands for all those that believe. Praise God. If you are in need of prayer, connect with us. We do have prayer warriors. Go to our website. Amen. Drop us a line. We will pray for you. Amen. If you want to be a part of this ministry, we have two things that you can do. You can become a full-fledged member or you can come up under watch care. Watch care is simply this. While you are making a decision to join the church because everybody needs spiritual housing. Everybody needs spiritual housing. I know they're talking about affordable housing, but you need spiritual housing. 
You need a place to lay your weary head. And you're not sure. What we do here at New Vision is we pray that God will order your steps, that you may find rest and get fed on a consistent basis. So go to our website. You'll see everything that you need on the website. If you want to give, that's on the website. If you want to text, look on the Facebook page, whatever. We have it for you. Beloved, be encouraged. This is your season for release. And this is your little brother in the kingdom reminding you that prayer not only changes things, but it changes people. And we honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, give them praise.